Hey, what's up? My name is Kristen. In today's video, I am going to talk about what I'm going to be doing for goal setting in 2023, what supplies I'm using and how I think I'm going to work all that out. And if I am, or if I'm not going to be using a specific goal setting system. So if that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you're subscribed and I'll be right back. All right, so you see I have a lot of stuff here. Um, I, if you watched my um, previous video where I talked about the mistakes that I had made um, in my goal setting journey, you will um, know that I don't think I'm gonna be using any of the like more popular goal setting systems to help me set up my goals for 2023. Um, I think those systems are all great. I just think that I am not currently in a place that I can utilize those systems in a way that's gonna be like a positive experience for me. And so I'm choosing not to, and I'm choosing to kind of do my own thing. I did that for the last few, like the, I think the last two quarters of 2022. Um, and, I, and I really liked like the chill way that I went about doing that and I feel like I got a lot of things done that I wanted to do um, and so I think I'm going to kind of take that approach and go like just kind of like step it up a little bit like baby steps. Um, I, I didn't have an overall like annual vision for last year. I was just kind of doing short-term goals just to kind of get my feet wet and see what worked and what didn't. And so I think what I'm gonna do is um, make an effort to do like an annual vision, annual goals, and then break that down for each quarter. So um, let's look at that real quick. And this was like my brainstorming session. Um, I just kind of wrote down, this is this book is my journal. There's a lot of private stuff in here, but there's also stuff like this where I just kind of get some things out on paper that I don't mind sharing with you. This is just a um, dot grid journal that I got from Michael's, um, probably sometime it was on sale and it was probably less than 10 bucks. Um, it's nice, I like it, the paper's good. My um, gel pens don't smear on it. I can use highlighter on it and it doesn't, it's a good, this is a good, a notebook. This is a Leuchterm, Leuchterm, I'm not sure. This is one of the more like fancy bullet journals. These can cost upwards of like $20 or more. And sometimes you just, you have to order them if stores near you don't carry them. Um, these are great too. I like these. I just, when you can get something like this at Michael's, why not? There's also a pocket in the back. It's got two ribbon bookmarks. It's got a pen loop and a, you know, closey band thing. <laughs> so anyway, I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do is keep using something like this as the place where I like brainstorm everything just to keep it safe. And it's also nice to have it handy with my journal. So, um, this is another, uh, this is an Erin Condren petite planner. I have one here. It's not a planner. It's a petite journal. Um, I have a new one here that I purchased. Um, I was thinking of using that, but um, I, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's a lined page on this side, and then like two thirds of the page on this side is lined, and then there's a checklist. And it has some different colors too. There's no pocket or anything. I was trying to count out how many pages there were in here, and um, there are 39 two page spreads like this, and then one back page. And so I was trying to see if I was able to get a whole year of goal planning in here for, for what I wanted to do. And I'm not going to be able to do that. So the way I wanted to do it, but if you can figure out a way to use it, there's 39, um, spreads. So that's the only reason I really brought this over here was just to kind of show you that was an option. But um, I am going to just keep using this book. This, there's a lot of pages left in this book. Um, and I'm just going to keep using this through the end of the year now. And then I will probably buy another one. Or I might even get an Erin Condren one. Um, I think they have dot grid softbound books. I'm not honestly not sure. And so, I don't know. 
If they do, I'll get one of those and I'm gonna use it as my journal, which I try to write in every day. Um, yes, there's not very much, I fizzled out for a long time. I was writing every day and then I stopped for months and then I picked it back up and it's been working wonders for me, like mentally. And so I'm, I'm gonna keep doing that. And then just keep writing my notes in here. And then if it fills up, it fills up. I can transfer anything important to the next book. If not, I'll just stick it on the shelf and then one day I'll purge it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get into the goal like system that I think I'm going to do. I use a Kanban system to keep track of my goals. Um, it's on a door in my office. I used to use post-it notes. I write out my goals and I put them on the door and then I move them. I have washi tape where I have sectioned off into the different sections and um, I used my Cricut to cut out some words that just say like to do, working on, and done. And that way I can, I can move the post-it notes around and put them where they need to go. And then I can easily visualize like small chunks of goals that I wanna work on. And so um, I'm definitely gonna keep doing that. It's been the best thing in my ability to keep track of things I wanna do. It's just been, it's game changer. I fully recommend trying it if you struggle with goal setting and you've just been like writing it in notebooks or goal planners or whatever. I fully recommend at least trying it once. Um, and you don't have to be fancy. Mine, I didn't buy anything. I just used some washi tape. I used post-it notes I already had and I have, um, you can just do it on your wall, but I did it on my office door because um, it was like a convenient little like section and it was also smooth where my walls are textured so my post-it notes don't stick on the wall as well, but you could use a frame, you could use a whiteboard. You can even just use a piece of paper that you tack up to the wall or tape on the wall. Um, just, I mean, you don't have to be fancy with it. So Kanban system, it's awesome, I'll link um, my goal setting um, playlist here. I think I can link a playlist. Um, if not, there is a playlist that you can go look at and then that will have videos of my Kanban system. Um, so here I kind of was wondering if I should have a separate journal just for my goal setting, separate from like my regular journal. Um, and I decided I wanted to keep it in my actual journal because I think it's really helpful for me personally when I'm journaling about whatever. Um, one, because I'll come up with an idea while I'm journaling um, that I can write down. I can just turn the page and write something down. Um, and two, while I'm journaling and kind of working through feelings, I can always go, I can flip back to certain pages and refer to them. I am a person that gets distracted very easy. And so if I have to have two different books, if I'm journaling and I think of something I need to put in my goal planner, um, once I get to that, I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna stop journaling. It's It breaks, it's just too, it's, it's just a thing. I can't have too many things or I forget to go back and do the other thing. Um, and so that's another reason why I'm trying to get all into as few books as possible as far as like planners goes, because it's just, it's just too much for me. <laughs> so um, I think I'm gonna try keeping it in the same book. And if for some reason that's not working out, then I can always go, um, to two separate books later, but it's harder to move into one book when you've been doing it into, in two, if that makes sense. Um, the other thing I'm using is my Google Calendar. I'm very big on using my uh, digital tools available to me um, in addition to paper products. Obviously, I love stationery. I'm a, definitely a paper person, but I also love technology and the efficiency and automation you can get out of technology. I don't like redundancy and I don't like having to rewrite the same thing all the time. Having redundant and recurring things um, in technology is really great. And so anything that is goal related that's recurring, 
I will just put in my Google Calendar or Google Tasks and then I get a reminder on my phone. And then that reminder, when I get that notification, it triggers me to check up on what I need to check up on. And so that's something that I really need to do. If you refer back to my mistakes video, I never would schedule in time to review my goals and that obviously didn't help me at all. And so if I put it in my Google calendar to remind me to check on my goals and do some like thinking and stuff, then that is going to help me. So that's a, that's a major, um, asset to my goal setting system. Um, and then a planner. Um, I am really, really, really doing a lot of work right now to figure out what planner is right for me as far as what I need at this point in my life and how I need to use it to be the most beneficial to me. And right now, this is a shock and maybe a little bit of a spoiler, but that is looking like a monthly planner. It's, I know I, I'm very big on daily planning and that's still gonna happen, but I, I don't think I need a weekly planner. I don't know, we'll talk more about that later in another video, but um, I'm thinking I might go with an Erin Condren monthly and add lined pages to the back of that. And then that'll be another video. We'll talk about how I'm gonna use that planner with my goals. Um, but yeah, so those are the things, like the, the resources I'm gonna be using. Um, I do have some notes here that um, I wanna use my Kanban system for quarterly reviews and I wanna use a page in my planner to write down when I'm brainstorming what, what goals I wanna do that quarter, just to like, I'm gonna use a page that's in my actual planner to help me with that. Um, I know I have the journal here that I'll do that in as well, but I think the journal is gonna be more for like it, you know, just getting stuff out of my brain. And then the planner page will be something that I make that looks kind of nice to look at so that I can refer back to it often, I think. I think that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. And then of course the Kanban, the Kanban is gonna have like the tasks that I need to move around, but the planner page will supplement that where I can get any extra thoughts out. Um, like on that page. Okay, so then the monthly review is also gonna be a page in the planner and that's something I do already. I think it's, there's one in here I can show you. Yeah, so this is just like a monthly reflection and I do it on the last page of the month. There's always a lined page at the back and um, I answer some questions. Um, they're always the same questions and they come from the Moxie Life system mostly and then I think these came from um, cultivate what matters maybe. So what went well and what didn't go so well? What lessons were learned? What challenges did you have? And what were your wins for that month? I think that all came from Moxie Life. And then spend more time on and spend less time on. I think those were things that I read about on the Cultivate What Matters blog maybe. I'm not sure. And then I just have a spot for the goals I want to focus on for that month. And that's been going really well. I like that. It's a perfect amount of space. It's just highlighters and pen. It's nothing fancy. And um, it's been working out really well. So um, yeah, that's definitely something I'm going to be doing in my planner on the last like day um, or the last page in that month. And um, the dashboard in the monthly is something that I've been really proud of myself for using a lot lately. It's a page that I never used to use before um, in any of my Erin Condren planners, but I've been really, really, like, really using it and really using it. Like, I'm not just decorating it and leaving it. Like, I'm actually getting in there and crossing things off and writing things in and it doesn't look pretty, it doesn't look as pretty as it did when I first decorated it, but that's okay, like I'm using it. And so um, I wanna keep using that, but I wanna make it more for my actual goals 
and not just tasks. Like the brain dump, or the, the this is good. I like this and I'm gonna keep this side as like my ongoing list for the month. Um, but the dashboard page, like this side of the spread, I want to, um, instead of like, I'm, I, there's a lot of space here that I'm not always using up. And so instead of that, I actually want to separate each of these into different goal categories I can focus on for the month. Like there's four boxes here and I think I can use each box as a specific goal category to focus on. Um, yeah, and um, that was something else I talked about in my mistakes video is I was trying to focus on too many categories at once. With the dashboard page only having four boxes, it kind of forces me to like pick which four categories I would like to focus on. And it's just a month's worth, so I don't have to like cram it full of stuff. It's, I just think that if I can just use that page for the goals, I think that will be helpful. Um, and then what else did I write? That I wanted to disperse those goals into the weeks. And so um, I did just get done saying I'm gonna be using a monthly planner and probably not a weekly planner. And that's something we'll talk about more, but I do want to make sure that I'm taking the goals that I am like lining out for myself for the month and putting them ahead of time, putting that like assigning tasks and things to each week. That's something I'm still trying to figure out if that's gonna work for me or if that's gonna to be too overwhelming. Um, I don't know if that's something I need to do ahead of time or not, but um, that's what I'm thinking at this point in time. I'm using my current Kanban system to like focus on a weekly task and not just a monthly task. And we're seeing if that's gonna work. Um, the next thing is routines. Um, I do want to make sure I am following a routine. I thrive on routines. It's just, it helps. Once I'm in the habit of doing something, once I have a routine, it's, it's less overwhelming because it's more like automated, if that makes sense. And so once something is like automated, I'm more able to um, just do the thing instead of like thinking about how I'm gonna do the thing. I don't know. Um, it's like, I don't know if you've ever heard like people like Mark Zuckerberg wear the same thing every day. Um, I think Steve Jobs was the same way too. Um, they wear the same thing all the time because it takes that decision making out of their brain. And so they don't have to think about what their wardrobe is gonna look like. They figured out the function and style and utility of their wardrobe to where it works for them and then that was it and they never have to think about it again. Um, that's kind of where I am headed with routines. I want to get the things that I just don't need to always be thinking about um, how I'm going to do it and I just want it automated. So I need to have a planning routine figured out and a goal setting routine figured out um, so that I can, it's just second nature. You just go in and you figure out how you do you, well, you don't figure it out. You just go in and you sit down with your stuff and then you just work through what you need to work through and then it's just automated. I want to like do the work. I don't want to just always be talking about the work. I don't want to always be planning how I'm going to do things. I actually want to do the things. And I think a lot of planner community people, because this is the kind of content that we put out, we're always talking about it and it's hard to see it actually getting done. Um, and for me, because this is the kind of content I put out, I'm always trying new things. And so when I'm trying new things, that's making it to where I'm not sticking with a routine. And I don't want to do that going forward. That's something that I'm going to have to figure out how to constantly make interesting content that's not always um, changing my like system. Uh, instead of, you know, once a system is working, I want to keep using it. I don't want to change it up so that there's something interesting to post. So that's something I'm kind of working through right now too in my journal and everything. Okay, so then the very last thing I want to talk about in this video is what my categories are. And I'm just going to very lightly touch on them and then in another video I will dive deeper into what each thing means. But um, 
Some of the things that I have been wanting to focus on are my content, my work, my health, um, just fun and recreation, travel, which goes with fun and recreation, I think. I put a note here that I would just combine those together. Finances, um, learning, and I'm kind of gonna combine um, work and learning together into one category, and then my home and my family, and then creativity is something I added later. So yes, that's a lot of categories, and I had said in my mistakes video that too many categories is too much. And so this is something I'm still kind of editing down and that's why I want to talk about it in another video because I'm still working through this and um, this was just the brainstorm. So this is just things that were on my mind, things that I know I can improve on. And so these are categories of life that I can work on, but they may not be in my 2023 goals. This is just, they might get pushed off to the next year. Who knows? I don't know. That's what we're doing here. We're figuring it out. So, um, and then creativity is something that I realized I'm a very creative person and um, I've been focusing so much on doing things like specific things that have a specific function that I'm not being as creative as I my brain craves. And so recently when I, I had done a couple of creative things just for the sake of doing it, and it just energized me so much that I just realized I really need a creative, like a truly creative thing um, to make sure I'm doing it and not just some little hobbies here and there that I dabble in, I really want to do a creative thing. And I don't know, that's still something I'm journaling on and working on in my head on what I want to do, but I def definitely need to add creativity to my goals. So anyway, this was a long rambly chatty video, but um, I just wanted to kind of get some of those things out in the open and talk about what I think will work best for me as far as goal setting. Um, and how 2023 might look. Um, I also wanted to ask you, what are you doing for goal setting in 2023? Are you using a system? I'm not using a system, but I don't think it's wrong to use a system, like at all. I think everybody needs to use whatever is gonna work for them. Um, and so I am still interested in seeing what other people are using um, just because I learn from it too. Even if I'm not using that system, I watch people's videos and I look at their Instagram and I do learn from that. So um, it, it is important. I do wanna keep up with that. So let me know what kind of um, goal setting system you're gonna be using in 2023. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in the comments. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, please consider subscribing because I do post planning videos on my channel three times a week. So if you liked this one, there's a chance there's some other content there that you might enjoy as well. Um, I will see you in the next one. Bye.